Hello, this is Hi Bob War Bob, and let's play some Ultimate General Civil War. Hello, and welcome back. Today we are playing the second episode here at First Bull Run. And I have something compass, of course, here with me again. Yeah, I'm looking uh, forward to seeing if you win this battle. It's nip and tuck. Oh, yeah. Ouch. It's like a really good movie. I try to keep it as exciting as possible without hopefully losing all of all of my allied units. Yeah, I was thinking uh, when I played this on Legendary, we did not get anything for captured units at all. So we worked really, really hard to not capture anybody. And, I mean, uh, it was pretty difficult to capture units anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, in this battle. Any but, battle. Uh, now we get rewarded for it if, if we can get captures. So I was just looking at your, you know, the unit you just merged in there. It was two zero star units. And I thought, yeah, I would merge those together because you don't, wouldn't lose anything. And then you merged them together. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's actually three units in there. Ah, okay. All three of those Ohio units. Yeah. Are all in that unit now. It's just a worthless, huge unit at this point, basically. Like. It's just there to take damage. I need to move my cannons like we were talking about. Well, it's less worthless now than it was before because those units of 300 weren't going to do anything. They were yeah, they were throw cotton balls at the enemy. And they were going to shatter. And they were going to shatter. I've definitely had them shatter on me. So yeah, I always stop and say, where's the commander? Where's the artillery? I like always hit pause and go, where's hey, the artillery? Hey, look, there's my supply wagon too. <laughs> Well, it's, it's near the artillery, so that's handy. It was out of yeah, range, just barely. It's, it's going to take a while for that artillery to get across that river. It always does take always forever. Does. Yeah, the, the six-pounders are actually pretty good if you put them right on the front line, but they're going to take losses there, but um, they don't do anything at long range. They don't. They really don't. But it's short range, I mean, canister range. They don't have a large canister range. But those cannons can get um, a thousand kills if you can put them right on top of the, I mean, like right behind the infantry unit. And, if and they're the going to take pass through damage, but they can get a thousand kills. If the enemy doesn't have counter battery themselves, because if they have counter battery, they're just going to nuke them. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. Like, that's not pass-through damage at that point. It's just they get nuked. Yeah, the um, the good news is the enemy has mostly garbage weapons at this point. And not all of their units are three-star. Just, like, half of them. <laughs> we are facing, like, B only has one star. Smith there. There is several of the Virginias that have three stars there, but like Bartow doesn't. So we are not having to face like solid lines of three stars. We do have weak points in the lines where we can push in on units that aren't as good. Here, I'm getting ready for the units that are going to spawn in later. Yeah, that's a pretty bold encirclement you're doing on both flanks because that leaves the flag very lightly defended it is isn't it? it it looks looks precarious yes it does i expect him to come uh charging at your units at any moment the problem is is that detached skirmishers fix all things ah. they, they cannot charge you because you just recombine a detached skirmisher pop it back out again and they stop Yep, because without that, they, they should be charging right at that flag right now with about three three-star units. It, it definitely looks that way, for sure. Yeah, I've but, had them do that, where they... And not only do they get into melee, but of course your Union infantry is immediately exhausted when that happens to them. Of course. That is a very interesting flanking maneuver. And by spreading out this way, 
they've also spread out. Yeah, because normally they'd concentrate right in a pocket right in front. Mm hmm. So it both works to my favor and to my disadvantage, both. It, it works to my favor because I get them spread out, but it works to my disadvantage because things like this Keys standing here, if anybody marches over here, Keys is just in trouble. Yeah, if he gets uh, charged by two or three units, he's doomed. If he gets charged by one unit, he's doomed. <laughs> Let's be honest, he's a zero-star unit standing right next to a river. You can't fall back. You can't do anything. Like, he would yeah, just would... die. Yeah, I wouldn't have the nerve to put him there. I'd expect him to die. See, the, the catch is, is that by being there, if he keeps some of their units from going north, he's he's serving his purpose. And if he gets hit in the face, it's just an allied unit. It's not the end of the world. Man, so, right now you, you you can take shots on all kind. You can get all kinds of flank shots right now. This is this is great. It's yeah, all one about of your that. Wagons, one of the wagons is empty already. Yeah, my wagon. My wagon wasn't very full. So, hey, I was actually able to fall back to the other side of the river break up my skirmishers and look at that it's like it never even happened perfect and that keeps them from being up north and being in my way yeah I don't think if we uh, route our supply wagon in this battle I don't think we get a second wagon no it has to be a second day there has to be a second day for it to work the um yeah, when Panda Crowd takes away the detached skirmer, detached skirmisher um, mechanic to stop charges, we're, we're going to be in trouble. I mean, it basically already is away. You can only detach skirmishers if they're not within 600 meters of the enemy. Uh, so you can't just detach them to stop charges anymore on the rebalance. Yeah, he's eventually going to make that a feature in the... I don't think he's going to do it in UI. Eventually he will. No, he's he's stated that he wants to keep the UI like vanilla. Oh, okay. So he doesn't want to make like... Because that is a pretty big balance change for not being able to stop um, charges is kind of a big balance change. Not just a minor one, really. Well, it is kind of a bug. I mean, it's a glitch in the game. It's not... I mean... Like Never an intended feature. Ooh, that guy's gonna get hammered. He Ooh, stopped. Man, he popped a detached skirmisher just in time. Mm-hmm. I was kind of looking forward to seeing that melee. That's not gonna be good though. Still, I'm still gonna take a hit from him. There's just nothing I can do there. I think I'm gonna take a hit from him. But I mean, Hampton's Legion's getting down pretty small at this point, and he's been broken several times. Oh, is he firing a volley? I don't think he is. I think he's firing sporadic. We'll see if I can see it here in a second. Let's see. Oh, he's just firing sporadic. Yes. Uh, yeah, he's he's broken. I got lucky. And he's firing into Franklin. That's an allied unit. Yeah, not even a, not even one of my units anyway. These um cannons are super annoying super annoying to push into i always like to advance on those guys with detached skirmishers so they take the first shot because uh infantry taking canister never goes well i mean detached skirmishers taking canister doesn't go very well either better than infantry i mean barely because detached what? skirmishers will oftentimes route after one volley so they might not yeah. even get to shoot Whereas infantry can usually take at least one volley, and then their detached skirmishers and them can fire. Which Canister. is kind of better. Yeah, canister, sorry. Yeah. Um, and very tiny detached skirmishers will just shatter if they take a blast that's too, too deadly. Yeah. 100% true, for sure. Problem is, yep. I can't really move up the center of my line here because there's no nowhere to like hold against, and they've got these trees here to fall back to, and this is just like, 
I mean, I'm getting good flanking shots and stuff, but it's just hard to, like, corral them into place. And I think it's in, at the end of this one that they get the big units in from the south. And he did get in the melee, finally. Ooh, and your, your guns are... Ooh, ouch. Still moving up, but we win the melee. Two on one, and Brooks firing into the melee, and Walton fired into it. Ooh, Brewster. Ooh, Brewster. How am I missing that over there? I just completely missed that, that was even happening, I guess. But Holmes had already taken some hits, it looks like. They charge with too low of uh, uh, morale, evidently. Yeah, and that little unit was only 300. One of the things that probably needs to be rebalanced at some point is, like, I, I watch a lot of these battles. There comes a point where the enemy has suffered over 50% losses. His units have been shot up. Some of them are very tiny, and they'll make suicidal charges. And whatever that logic is needs to be changed. Like, it, at some point when the enemy's taken 50% casualties, um, they need to start, and they're outnumbered, they need to start thinking about taking up a defensive position. And, and the interesting thing is when the, the AI actually does that, it makes for a much more interesting battle. Like, like when you outnumber him and he's been shot up and he's just charging stupidly into your position where you have great cover, you're just harvesting kills. And you know it. Yeah. But if he were to dig in and take up a good defensive position with artillery support and you had to go after him, um, that that would make the battle so much more interesting. At a certain point, when he gets to, say, 25%, he should just leave the battle rather than stand there and die. Now, we would all be unhappy with that because we'd lose XP, but it it would be more realistic. It would. I mean, to be honest, there's a lot of times whenever the AI shouldn't even allow it to go on to the next day. Period. Yeah. Because yeah. it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and it, it would be, in most games, what you have, if you get a decisive victory early, you get rewarded with reputation or cash or something. Something good happens. In Ultimate General, you get a decisive victory early, you get punished. Just because you don't gain as much experience. Right. And this is all about gaining experience for the campaign. Yeah. And everything carries over from, like, all your units carry over from battle to battle, whereas a lot of those battles, like, you'll have set-piece armies, and all you do is, like, you get rep to buy more men, but the men don't necessarily carry over from battle to battle. So it's like a double whammy there that you don't you you keep all your men so you want them to be as good as possible and also you don't you don't really get more rep for winning better there is no right. better win than just winning right is this all their men or is there still more units to spawn well you kept talking about more units spawning but i i guess this is it isn't it i thought there were still more units for some reason you have pretty much shot them to pieces. Except Yule and Coke there. Yule and Coke still have quite a few men. Oh, and there's one more with 2,300 down there. But he's so flanked at this point. Smith. He'll still get a shot off somewhere, though. Uh, that's just how this is going to go. Yeah, it's interesting. You're moving in real fast with three units. I would have stopped and moved my artillery up before doing that. Yeah, I take a hit. Take one hit there. I don't think I'll take another hit, though. From him. I'm not sure. But three units hitting him at once should be... Pretty good, I think. Yeah. Those six-pounders that are to the left... Man, I keep... You know, for the Union, I'm always thinking artillery. If those guys were right up on the front line... There you go. He's... He's, uh... Oh, yeah, and the next unit's only 300, so he's dead. The big unit of 2,000 is already flashing white. Yep, and the other two, all three of the 2,000s are all flashing. Well, Smith what? Flish, Smith is firing bad volleys, so same difference.
Yep, now it's just harvest kills time. Yeah. Get flank shots. And this water is some of the water that's really, really, really bad for uh, units routing in. Yeah. So it's the perfect place to route enemies into. I'm, I just let that happen because it's an allied unit. Yeah, and he had no choice. I mean, he had no chance that yeah. enemy unit was going to get hammered. Yeah. Well, and then they charge again. And there's first capture, second capture. Nice. Wilcox, I just ran in there because I was like, hey, you know, why not? Then there's yeah. there there's my unit that's going to take. Let's see how many losses he takes. Whenever he touches a melee at some point, he's going to touch a melee at some point. I'm going to regret it. War Bob there. I was just trying to get him to get the supply wagons. Yeah. And I think I'm going to accidentally touch the melee, or I'm going to... There we go. I touch the melee, and I'm like, yeah, oh cool. boy. And it's like, boom. Ouch. And I just keep losing men. And I was like, I'm done. I'm out. Get out of here. Goodbye. <laughs> done with that. I don't know if I took a volley or if I just touched the wrong guy in melee or what happened, but I think I I, I think it was like I don't know, like fifty losses or or more that I took like in a pretty short time span there. All because I looked away after I captured the wagons. And I I set that to min only and instead of cannons only. Or like just turning it off completely, so I probably wasted like half that supply wagon. And it looks like there are only two surviving enemy units at this point. Yep. Yeah. I'd go, I'd go get them. No. No, you can't go get them because you've still got like, I don't know, like six hours before the battle ends. Oh, yes, that's right. Have to fight that impulse. Yeah, I know. I I had to do the same thing. And now they re, re, start recapturing all the units instead. And it's like, ugh. Sure they will. But, yeah, what time does this go on to? It's like 16... I can't remember. I can't I remember, but it goes on for quite a while. that it's like 18.45. So, four hours of grinding stamina. Yep. 18.45 or until all CSA units are eliminated. Yeah, and what that is is that's a great opportunity. Letting those units survive is a great opportunity for the artillery to to grind up XP and firearms and for your your infantry to uh, start running in circles. Yeah. Nice. So I'm going to cut out most of the circles, but right now we still haven't finished up the fight yet. So I figure that I should probably show capturing the last couple and getting the guy into the corner before I move on I guess I could pause it for like a second and draw a bunch of circles but I don't I don't usually get that granular <laughs> to be completely honest yeah and I'm still like terrified of getting my unit into melee because I'm still seeing their units like take damage faster than I would like to take damage because yeah like that guy is still taking pretty good damage yeah war bob is done a wonderful job of uh, racking up kills that, yeah. that has turned out great for him I think he's got the Lorenzas too and he's got my um, he's got my general on him so he needs XP more than everybody else because I want to get to that three star I get a three star and a two star well I get a th one three star and three three two stars by Shiloh yeah, oh, that's that's great. And by the end of Shiloh, I will have three three stars. Yeah, that's super. Yeah. The, uh, someone told me that the the best way to get XP is to put your two star unit that you want to get a promotion to its third star in your worst one star unit. Yeah. And then just make sure that that unit does is involved in everything, and it will grind the most XP because. That unit will apparently low level XP is fast is gained faster than high level. 
So right. Makes sense. So one unit finally broke free. Well, a couple units finally broke free of the river, which is what I was looking for. I was wanting them to actually finally get out of the river because it's really hard for them to get out of the river to begin with. Yeah. Once they get stuck in that river, it is just ridiculously hard. Warbob's over there still taking damage from being in melee. But he's grinding melee XP. Which yeah, is good. but... Uh, you know, melee XP is very close to not worth it with Union units just because of just how bad they are in melee. Like, period. And, yeah, you're going to pay for it in, in losses. Yeah, and their condition goes down so fast. I think is part of it. So I think we skip ahead here. Looked like we skipped ahead a bit. Yep, we did. And then this will be the end of the battle. It is, you know, a few minutes till. Guys have been running in circles for four hours. Yeah. And you're sending everybody forward to uh, kill this last guy with... Allied units. Yeah. And there we go. A lot of those... 4,200. 4, How many kills did you get? Um, my units are total. Your units, I guess, since you already broke it out. Um, my units got, uh, between kills and captures, 12,462. So it's about 6,000 kills. Wait, that seems wrong, because that's 20,000 killed and 6,800 captures. Did I really get that few kills? Maybe I didn't count captures towards my kills at all. I don't know. But 20,000 kills seems like I would have gotten more than, or at least half of those, and that doesn't come out to half. Maybe I gave them more of the captures since they were the ones going into the river there. Maybe. I don't remember. Promotions, man. Yeah, but a lot of them are just allied units. Yeah, but some of them have to be yours. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they definitely. There's definitely so, quite a few that are mine. So I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of an army. Oh yeah, look at this. You you went in with 1,500 except for one unit that was a little small, 800 and something. Even your small unit is 700. These guys are not too far away. Oh, look at that. Yeah, look how close that is to three stars. I was so mad. It's like 98%. I was like, oh, come on. That close? Not fair. Yeah, it's all right. The academy was pretty bad. I mean, I was pretty mad about that, that I only got like one general and one colonel. Now, it, the thing about these Union units is you're you're going to have battles where you're going to just bring so many more units than the CSA that your units can be smaller. They can be commanded by majors. It doesn't matter because you're going to have a hundred of them. And so they'll be able to grind stamina, grind XP. Majors become lieutenant colonels. Lieutenant colonels become colonels. It, it's just, you know, you're just always I mean, I had uh, one battle that I fought. I was, I'm playing this campaign on Brigadier General because of how terrible the weapons are. It's kind of just an experiment how big you can build your army. Yeah. But it's you look at the map sometimes and you have a hundred units and they're just in they're, they're in each other's way and there's nothing for them to do. Except so, run little circles. Yeah, that's all you can do. Run in circles. Bring a bunch or, of basically no no star guys with twenty stamina and just run them in circles for hours. Yeah, right. Or what I do is take a division and, you know, division at a time and just have them run to the other end of the map. But, that works too. But, but the point is, is that you have one battle. You can still get all of your men onto the battlefield just because of the number of units you can build, bring. And it doesn't matter if they're 1,200 and with majors or 2,500 with brigadier generals. It's not like the CSA. You're not going to bring raw recruits uh, onto the field with their first unit perk. There, there are going to yeah. be no raw recruits with a unit perk ever. Right, so but that you... I don't ever bring raw recruits to a battle. Yeah, you're pouring them into your experienced units. Yeah. And pouring my experienced units out into my recruit pool so to allow myself to bring one-star units to everything, at least one-star. 
I don't ever yeah. want to show up to a battle with a zero star. Well, think about it. When you go to Antietam, for example, uh, you're allowed to bring five cores. I think of 20 units each. And there's, you know, you can bring a whole bunch of completely green units and just run. Because you're true. not going to need your whole army. So for those units, yeah, I'll bring... I don't mind bringing green units, but for anybody who's going to fire a shot in anger at somebody, <laughs> I yeah. try not to... Uh, so this last little bit is just a slowed down version of just the last few seconds here, just in case we wanted to keep talking. Um, so it will look a little weird on the recording, but that's okay. I just felt like I had to like give something. Because last time I kind of cut us off at the end of recording. Because it was just like, oh, guess what? It's over. Yeah, I like um, looking at this, and I'm I'm interested in what your I mean your armor armory at this point probably is going to be pretty terrible. Um, you do have one hundred ninety five thousand dollars. You're not going to buy any veterans. No. Um, Got to fill out that next core. Yeah. But then after that, I don't have really anywhere that I need to spend all that much money except just buying more weapons. And yeah. I think the next battle you can bring 10 units to. And then the one after that is 12. I think that's right. So, And, and I think the whole point of, of this from a power gaming point of view is get to 2000 men per unit with army organization as fast as possible so and, that you can bring as many men as possible to those small battles. Right. And right after Shiloh, you can go to 2,500, which I do go to 2,500 right after Shiloh. Some of those yeah. battles after Shiloh are really small, only like six units. Yeah. And there's no reason to have 2,500 men per unit at Shiloh because you want more units you say you get coverage of the battlefield you don't want any 2500 man units at shiloh right they're all 2000 man units yeah i bring 12 units in one core so i i did the math and i mm -hmm. actually went through and i figured out exactly how many men you need to bring to shiloh to get the biggest benefits and um I can pull that up real quick. Um, let me pause the recording. Okay, so here's my army build before Shiloh. Wow, that is unusual. What? Are you putting first core on the right or second core on the right? First core is going... Um, it, it has a smaller command radius for your commander. Yeah. And my, I want my three-star um, commander to be the one... That is this guy. So War Bob is here with the three stars. Um, okay, so you put the artillery and the infantry, the small core on the left. Right. Okay. I mean, so, yeah, it's, the, it's the right on the screen, but it's right. the left of the union. union but, but really, um, like these three units come in for the right, not for the left. Then these yes, four right. units come in to all... These four units spawn in original, like these are reinforcements on the right. Yeah. These spawn in on the left, and then these are reinforcements on the left. And then, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These seven units spawn in on the right, and these. One, two, three, four, five units, along with these five, un four units spawn in on the left. So once you get to 12 units, you don't get any more units until you get to 20 units in your f main core spawning in at the start of battles. So like you get the seven units if you hit 12 and you get the five units if you hit 12. But then you have to get to 20 to even get one extra unit. And that unit is on the left, and it's only one unit. 
So going to 20 makes no sense unless you just feel like it. Because to get to the 20 units, I have to at least get rid of one of my infantry units in just ballast units worth of stuff. Like, yeah. the smallest unit you can make is 100 men. I need another eight units in this core. That's almost half an infantry unit that I would have to just destroy for no reason. Doesn't make any sense. Now, I could throw some of these units over there, maybe, but I want to get these four units spawned in, so I have to have... I think I have to have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have to have, like, at least eight or nine to get these four units to spawn in on the left-hand side. And I don't need any more infantry on the right. Is what I've found. And having a 20-pound parrot is pretty nice there. And then the two six-pounders can get pretty close. And that's good for me. But... You see, I have five two-star units. Everybody is at least one star. Except this... No, that guy even is. Everybody's at least one star. They don't necessarily have a whole lot of good experience, but... The, the two-star units do. But you see how close they are to being just two stars. Like, it's right there. And by the yeah, end of it, almost every single one of these units will be two stars. By the end of the battle. Yeah, that's really a good looking army for Shiloh. Yeah, it's not as many units as some people bring, but, you know, having all 2,000 man units for my infantry corps and pretty good size artillery. Like, that one's a little bit small. Um, I just don't have much money. So, this is all the supply I bring is that 2,690, 26,996. This one is nine. Yeah. And the only reason it has nine in it is so I can retreat it off the battlefield so they'll get an extra supply wagon. Yeah, which is genius. And this supply wagon comes in as a reinforcement with these two units on the left-hand side. Sorry, I keep having to think in my head which side it's on. And this, this wagon doesn't come in until it opens up like the whole battle. And it's like, it's already too late by that point. This thing would take forever to get anywhere. And I found that this is enough ammo for me with such um, heavy focus on infantry. I'm surprised it is with, I mean, that's a lot of artillery. It is. Uh, and you're able to keep it supplied? No, I don't keep my artillery supplied at all. Oh, okay. I, I turn off the supply for artillery, at least at one point in the battle. Yeah, that's, that's what I have to do at Shiloh, too, is turn off the uh, supply for the artillery so that my infantry doesn't... If your infantry runs out of ammo, the battle's lost. Yeah. Okay, guys. This has kind of been a weird tangent on a uh, battle about first bull run, but you know Shiloh's coming up, and everybody needs information about Shiloh. It's like the litmus test of your run on either side. So that's a little sneak peek of what the army is going to get to look like in the future because obviously right now we barely even have one core like not even one core so you guys Love have a it. good one and uh we'll see you in the next one yep it's been fun man thanks yeah well this has been a blast hope you guys have had as much fun as i've had i'll see you again in the next episode you guys have a good one <laughs>